I've learned quite a lot since then, because obviously it was quite a lot of time. Um, I think the first thing that I learned um, was that I, you might not necessarily end up on the path that you thought that you would do when initially when you graduated. Um, a lot of my friends and me, you know, I had an idea of that I'd go into a studio and stay in the studio environment and work kind of up from there, um, which is brilliant. It's a great way to get into the industry. Um, but there are other alternatives and it's okay to explore those. And I think it's important not to just tunnel vision um, yourself yeah. and be like, I need to just get this one job. So initially I started as an art worker um, in a studio in an internship. Um, it was a small studio in Southampton and I did some design work as well, but mainly it was about uh, art working. And this, I didn't really know much about the role at all before I started. So I found that it was very much about um, checking over current files, kind of working, picking up other people's work and just checking it ready for print, uh, which is really important skills as a graphic designer, but not something that I would like to do day to day and work my way up in. Yeah. I prefer to be conceptual and idea driven. So I took a step back from the studio environment and actually started to build up freelance work, which has also been really interesting and something I really wouldn't have thought I would do where initially um, when I graduated. So, you know, you might not end up on the, the path you thought you did, but it doesn't mean it's not the right one for you. It's just different. Sure. So do you think it's useful to do internships? Was your overall experience useful, you think? Yeah, definitely. I think it's really important as a way to find out uh, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what you still need to learn. Um, you know, I thought I knew quite a lot about InDesign, but it turns out, you know, there's so much still out there that I need to learn. And that was a really important experience for me. So I would definitely recommend them, you know, even if it is just to rule out what you don't want to do. Mm. You know, also as an intern, people will want to nurture your ability and they don't expect you to understand everything just yet. So it's a yeah. really good way to learn more once you finish university, especially if you're feeling um, a little bit nervous about moving into the working world. I think it's a really good starting point. A way to adjust in and ease in, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, it's also a, a strange thing to like leave uni and then what is expected of me, I guess, that feeling. And um, even if you like go in, again, go in a place where you are an intern, you are not always clearly define what you need to know so is that something that uh, after uni uh, you know and you are aware of uh, when you start as an intern or what is expected of you or is it just something that you actually adjust to for me i definitely had to adjust to it i didn't realize i kind of didn't realize they didn't expect me to have all the answers already mm. um, that if i had a question it was absolutely fine to just you know, straight up ask it. I think I spent too much time trying to look like I knew a bit more than I did when actually uh, they said, it's absolutely fine for you to ask whatever you want and we would prefer for you to ask the questions so then we don't have to kind of go back over work that you've done and explain how you could have done it faster or a better technique that could have been used or, you know, anything really that they could have told me you know, an hour or two ago if I just asked the question. So I think as an intern, you are expected to do obviously your job and do it well and to the best of your ability. But there is a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to your responsibilities that you can ask a lot more questions or um, go and ask for feedback a lot more than say if you were employed straight up as a junior designer or art worker or illustrator. Mm -hmm. So when you first start either an internship or a job, you obviously feel like uh, there's so many people already around you that work and they've been doing it for a long time. Or even if you are doing freelance work from home, you will obviously always look at other people's work and you compare yourself. That's just natural. So um, how do you avoid feeling like I will never be good and I will never be as good as that? Uh, so how can you get confident uh, just starting after university? Sure. I mean, yeah, I felt exactly the same when I started and I'd look at other people's work, you know, on the Internet or people that I was working with. And to begin with, yeah, I did feel a little bit like maybe I'm not good enough or, or which I think a lot of creative people do feel. But I think I realized after a couple of months, um, something that I really wish that I would thought of sooner really is that 
you know, you should be inspired by the people around you, the, the yeah. work they're producing, the ideas they've used, the style, the technique, the method, you know, instead of being in scared by it or viewing it as like a competition, you know, just let the ideas and the work inspire what you're doing and try and use it as like a visual feed for the work that you produce from then on. Mm -hmm. So I think you'll find really quickly that if you look at enough things and if you use inspiration enough, it will start to really show through in your work and it would surprise you actually how much you can develop from it instead of just being scared. Of it. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's something that most like famous artists would agree that they are stealing from others. Definitely. So it's like uh, you cannot create things completely from scratch. That was always something similar done before, Definitely. but it's copying from many sources and merging it together will create something unique. So you should never be afraid of doing something similar to someone else. So it's always good to, as you said, like have a visual feed, like a resource or a Definitely. source. Yeah, I definitely think it's important to look at lots of different things and, and your ideas will be influenced by everything that you're looking at and you can create something new based on all of the older work that you're looking at. So yeah, I think it's really important to not be afraid to kind of recycle ideas or create something that's individual to you, but you know, based on lots, lots of other things that you've looked at. So obviously nowadays there's so much inspiration all around us. I mean, if you go online, there's yeah. a wealth of information and uh, visual feed, as you said. So how do you stay inspired? Is that like a daily routine or something that you do or like best spots to find inspiration? Sure. So like you say, there's a lot of different places that you can find inspiration and everyone has kind of a different preference. I mean, I really like using Instagram um, if you have a personal or a work account, as long as you're following things that you think are visually inspiring, um, then it works really well to look at, you know, in the mornings or in the evenings before you go to bed. Um, it's something that I think I probably look at a bit too much, if I'm honest. But um, but no, I think Instagram's fantastic. I also really like Pinterest because you can create, you know, different boards for you know, different projects that you're working on or for personal projects that you're working on. I think another really good re resource is like Behance because um, you can, it's quite, it's got quite a professional feel about it. Uh, people post their finished products. You can, I use it quite a lot to see the best way to display your work or, you know, for a presentation or something. So I think all of those are really useful. Um, there's also some really good creative blogs like the, the Creative Review blog's amazing. So it's uh, boom. But I guess it doesn't have to be only online, so you can find inspiration wherever you go. And uh, what, I, what I think is important is to just get out there and have an open mind and whatever you see can be an inspiration. It doesn't even have to be a graphic. It can be a nice tree or a nice sky. So um, do you think that's also something that is common with your generation? like? Um, would, they, would your generation still go to museums to find inspiration there or it's mainly online? No, I, I definitely think it's important to every time that I feel like I'm stuck or if I keep creating something that looks very similar, I'll try and get out and do something. That could be anything, you know, like you say, you could go to a local museum, you could go to even your local coffee shop, take a good magazine, design or not. Um, and just have a read or have a look around at local sites or like you say, go for a walk in the park, you know, anything. You can draw inspiration from anywhere and, and actually sometimes having a break from what you're doing um, and thinking about something else for a while, you'll find in other aspects of your life, you'll be inspired and it will feed back into your project and you'll end up with something that was so much better for, just for the sake of getting out for a little while, like you say, can make all the difference to your work. So.